Hello, hello, DRock here. Welcome to the channel. I hope you all are well. Today I am doing what I think is a very important video. Some have already made these videos, but uh, for me, this has been a long time coming. Um, my last video I put up, which was a KLR video, I spent half a day narrating, talking about some things. Then I, I actually got on the bike and did riding for another few hours. When I got back and checked the footage, the audio is completely screwed on the riding part of that video. So that whole day, or I should say half a day, was just completely wasted. So another, what it amounted to was another GoPro failure. And <laughs> it's not something that happens all the time, but when it does happen, it's just, terrible. So I've been using GoPros for the entirety, the entire time I've had a YouTube channel. That's pretty much the only camera I've used other than say a drone or a phone. So I've, I've gone from GoPro 4s all the way to GoPro 11s. And uh, overall, I'm happy with GoPro. The image quality with the, the more recent models, like the, the the 10, 11, I don't know anything about the 12, but let's just say the 9, 10, 11 uh, have been excellent. And uh, uh, they've, they've done really well in that, in that category with, with what I've been doing on this channel. So, however, however, GoPros are glitchy. Uh, they overheat easily. And with moto vlogging in particular, the whole setup has just become ridiculous. For me, ridiculous. It's just, it's just a pain in the butt to deal with. So, and I, I always get this question too as to what setup I'm using because the audio quality overall can be quite good. So I'm gonna describe that today and I'm gonna tell you what I'm transitioning into which uh, should have all Moto Vloggers rejoicing. So, stay tuned. Let's get into it. So first, let's just start out with, with the GoPros and my setup, and I'll describe that in case that's something you want to do. Uh, and I'll give you some warnings about it, but let, let me just show you a couple things first. This is a GoPro 7, and this is a GoPro 11. So you can see just the size of the camera is different. So you got a bigger camera once you get to the, I believe it was, it went from the seven, the eight got bigger, then the nine got bigger and it stayed the same size, the 9, 10, 11. I think the 12 is the same size. Batteries changed, all, this, all these kind of things. I really liked it when the camera was this size. However, we went to, or I'm sorry, we didn't, but GoPro went to a larger size here. This kind of spreads the heat around. However, this is still prone to overheating and overheating it does. And when it overheats, it crashes. And I've lost entire days work footage, whether I was on the motorcycle, out on the boat, just completely ruined, fried the media card, everything gone. And that's just unacceptable. But it happens. It happens with GoPros. The product's glitchy. Uh, a lot of file, broken files that sometimes can get repaired, sometimes can't. Uh, it's just, it gets very, very frustrating. And nowadays, present, we're in 2024, GoPro has some pretty serious competition. So uh, you've got the Insta360 cameras, you've got the DJI Osmo action cameras, and um, it's getting, the competition is getting pretty fierce for GoPro. So that being said, uh, to use the GoPro or what I use the GoPro with uh, moto vlogging, this is the 11 camera. So the first thing you gotta do is you've got to take off the side door here, right there. 
So that exposes the battery. Sorry, I've got a battery in there right now. We can take that out actually. So you have to remove that door and hopefully you don't lose that. I've already lost a couple of them this way. Then you have to get another accessory. This is the GoPro Media Mod, and I'm pretty sure this is now the same with the Model 12 that's out. I don't know if they're gonna change this in the any near future. So you gotta take your GoPro, put your battery in, then you've gotta put it inside this case, which is the Media Mod. There. Now, <laughs> let's look at, look how much it's just, it's gotten bigger, right? Okay, so once this is done, you have to attach a lavalier microphone, but you just can't use just a lavalier microphone. You have to get another cord to an adapter, which plugs into the media mod, and then the lavalier microphone plugs into that, and then you got it taped up into your helmet. Sounds simple, right? Now what often happens is more common than the camera crashing or overheating is this whole wire setup trashes. And I don't know what goes on, but you have to tuck it in and everything, of course. And wherever you have multiple things connected, that's always a failure point. So. You know, you've got this long thing hanging down, of course, and you know, you get your helmet on, all your gear, you're stepping on the wires, wires are pulling apart. That starts to uh, degrade quality, audio quality. And then when you, what I've noticed, especially with this whole setup, is when I get out on the interstate and ride at higher speeds, you know, above 55 miles per hour, let's just go to 70, 75 miles per hour, it really screws up the audio. And if you've got the wires hanging out, it's gonna be whipping all around. And that, once again, degrades connection points and you start to hear in the audio, the, the crackling and the popping. And I've had this, this happen all the time in my videos. Some to the point where I've had to go out and purchase all this new gear again just to make this work. So the lavalier mic, I think is, between 30 and $40. And then this adapter cord uh, is $10. So there you go, that's 50 bucks that you have to constantly, not constantly, but enough times to, that it's beginning to get beyond annoying, replace all this stuff. And then the connection, which is right here on the media mod, which goes into the camera, that becomes degraded. So you have to buy a new media mod. This, this whole contraption fails. Not only that, but it connects to the camera from a tab in there. That whole thing degrades and it just, it goes on and on. I've had to go through different media mods. These are 80 to $90 a piece, just this piece of plastic here. And sometimes they, they end up not even working with the model. Like I've got like three or four of these laying around that only work with like Jin's Model 9 GoPro, but will not work with the Model 10 GoPro. I mean, it's just ridiculous. <laughs> anyway, that's been my setup for moto vlogging, video, audio at the same time. There's other options. You can use like a Tascam recorder, and then you can sync up the audio and the video in post. It's a time suck. It's a time suck. What I'm trying to do is find the best thing that would work and consistently work without uh, lots of moving parts and also would not be an absolute time suck in post because it's so many things are just a time suck. And as we all know, we just don't have enough time. So I, after my most recent GoPro failure, uh, I can't say it was the camera's fault, but everything that was attached to the camera created that problem. And if it's not that, then it's some glitch going on in the camera. It's just, it's to the point where it's just, anyway, we don't need to get my blood pressure going up. But 
I mean, I've tried everything I can with, with, you've seen me with helmets just duct taped, wiring duct taped everywhere. I don't know. My system works most of the time, but like I mentioned, when it doesn't work, it's just an absolute catastrophe. Because if you don't stop and continually check the footage and you just go and go and go for hours, whether you're out in the desert, riding streets, what, it doesn't matter. You go for a whole day only to come back transfer everything to your computer for editing and then find out your audio is completely screwed the entire video. Then what do you do? <laughs> Jesus. The only thing you can do at that point is just to completely delete all the audio and then add separate narration. So, you know, it's salvageable, but uh, it is what it is. So all that being said, after my last fiasco with this, this whole setup, I went to the interwebs and started searching. There's got to be something better. And I believe there now is. And what I mean by now, I mean currently, present day, 2024. It's now March, 2024. And what I'm filming right now on is a, a completely new camera. I'm using the DJI, I keep saying G, DJI Osmo Action 4. And I've got this right here, which is a wireless mic the DJI Mic 2. And not only that, it's this is, if you are a moto vlogging, this should be your, well, I shouldn't say at this point, this should be, I'm saying this could be just an end to this absolute mess. So this mic right here syncs to the camera. I don't need any wires. And I just put the mic, it's got a magnetic, back here on the mic, this, I've got a magnetic strip inside the helmet, sticks to the magnetic strip, no more wires, and synced audio with video with no problems. So I've spent the entire morning uh, familiarizing myself with the camera, and for the most part, it's similar to the functions of a GoPro camera. I mean, I think they're all fairly similar. It's just pressing buttons, really. Uh, you can do voice activated recording with the Osmo, and uh, the syncing, you have to get uh, uh, a, a firmware update. So you need to check on the update with the Osmo Action 4 camera, but the DJI, DJI Mic 2 uh, syncs perfectly with the camera and we shouldn't have any more problems, right? Right? So what I'm gonna do today is I'm not gonna get into all the technical specifications of the Action 4 camera and the DJI mic, God, I keep saying G, DJI mic 2. What I'm gonna do is just, I'm gonna take this out and I'm gonna ride. I'm gonna ride just on your average back roads, your highway, the interstate and the dirt. And I'm just gonna check image quality and also image quality with the camera, of course, and also audio quality that's already synced up that I don't have to match up in post. So this, is it really is for lack of a better term a game changer in moto vlogging getting rid of all the wires and all the attachments and stuff oh my goodness talk about just eureka i mean it's it's fantastic now i had to spend some coin on this i think with the camera the mic the charger all the general accessories used to come with it i think i was out the door just under $800. I know it's it's a sting, but it is what it is. And sometimes you just pay for the peace of mind. And this is uh, just the first in a, a bunch of preliminary tests of how this all this product works. So I think it's very exciting. I'm pretty stoked. And uh, I wanna go ahead and get riding and see how this all works out. So that being said, Let's go ahead and start riding and see how it all sounds. Okay, so just doing a quick side-by-side -side before we start the ride here with the Action 4 next to the GoPro Hero 11. And then here is the, the mic as well. So you can see there's a bit of a size difference between the two cameras. I'm not gonna get into like all the functions and specifics of the Action 4. There's better videos out there and I'm just gonna concentrate on getting out on the bike and uh, seeing what the, the quality of the video looks like right out of the box, as well as how it's working with the mic. But this is the whole new system here, the Action 4 and the DJ, 
DJI Mic 2. So I'm pretty stoked to go ahead and get this rolling. And I think I'm gonna have a little less neck fatigue with this camera versus the GoPro. This is the Hero 11, by the way. Anyway, so here's a look at it. Now let's get on the road and see what happens. Man, that was so weird. Putting all this stuff on, I didn't have to tuck in any wires. And let me just tell you a couple things real quick. I'm not going to say the whole name of the camera and the mic anymore because I keep messing that up. So it's just going to be an Action 4 camera. That is the DJI Osmo Action 4 camera. I have in conjunction with the DJI Mic 2. So I'm just going to call it Mic 2 and Action 4 camera from now on just to make things easier. Proceeding. Uh, initially, immediately, the weight of the camera is significantly less than the whole GoPro setup with the media mod. This is so much better. I can already tell. And that is one thing that I did not like about the GoPro system is that I would get severe neck fatigue after hours and hours of riding with that setup. Oh, there's a lot of traffic down here right now. What's going on? Uh, also, the Mic 2 has, of course, its own battery. There's no wires. Everything is wireless. Uh, and from what I understand, you can get about six hours out of the mic before it dies. So six hours is pretty good. So another feature, of course, is you can activate this with just your voice. I don't have to reach up and hit the button. It works with saying start and stop and things like that. So you can completely control this camera while you're riding with your voice. Well, it seems to be that way. Right now I'm doing that with, there's not a lot of wind noise out there and uh, I'm, I'm at a slower speed. Oh, I better get that turn signal off. That's what I was gonna say. I was gonna talk about my helmet real quick. So the helmet, I have a modular helmet and like I mentioned, I've just got the mic. The mic has a magnetic back or a clip on it. Uh, I have a piece of magnetic tape inside my helmet and it just stuck to that and that's how I have it inserted in my helmet. Uh, I have my windshield down on the helmet so it's completely enclosed right now and I, I can't tell how well the audio is of course at this very moment but I'm presuming that it's pretty good. So what I'm going to do is just ride you know, on, on regular roads like this, I'm going to take it on the interstate and I'm gonna get on the dirt and just see how the camera and mic hold up on all the different riding conditions. So as I mentioned, I'm not gonna get into all the technical specifications of this setup, uh, but I will say that I pretty much just tossed everything on the helmet and I went. I didn't do any type of modifications with the mic in, in the settings, so I haven't touched anything. It's just pretty much straight out of the box and synced with the camera and I'm going. So I haven't done any you know, um, adjusting, I, I, maybe that makes better sense. But I will say a cool feature that uh, this has is when it is synced with the camera, it immediately tells you the battery life of the microphone. So you get some idea of, you know, the longevity of it all. So this is all very, very nice. And as I keep saying, very, very exciting. All right, so I've got the wind visor open on my helmet. So I'm just checking to see what the audio is like. At this point, I was struggling with the voice command when I had the wind visor up, so, or the windshield of my helmet. It wouldn't seem to turn on. So maybe that's gonna be an issue even though I can just reach up and turn it on and off with my hand. It's not that big of a deal, but having the voice command is nice, but uh, I can understand why it may not be working. So just interesting to see how this is all going to pan out. Let's go ahead and get up to 5560 and see what we're thinking. Um, see how we're sounding. I do have my windshield down on my helmet, of course. And I, I hopefully I'm not getting too much uh, problems from the wind, you know, noise, noise aberrations or anything.
just kind of let it play out for a second, see how it sounds. Well, that was certainly interesting. So I had a pretty, <laughs> could have been a catastrophic failure. Uh, the mic slipped out of my helmet and fell on my lap. Just was at the stoplight before I was ready to get on the interstate. So I managed to get over and get the mic before I completely lost that to oblivion. And it wasn't any of the gear's fault. It was the, uh, you can see there in the sunlight where my finger is, that's the magnetic strip and the adhesive just sucks. So that's 3, 3M adhesive, but it's not working very well in the plastic. So I uh, made an emergency stop. I'm gonna get some super glue and I'm going to cement that thing in there for good. Then we're gonna try something else. I'll put another strip on when I get back to the house with some better adhesive, but for now, this is just gonna have to work. Okay, back in action. So glad I caught that, good Lord. Super glued in, that magnet strip doesn't seem to be going anywhere right now. And I was, uh, while I was letting it set, I was listening to some playback on the camera and um, I'm used to basically, when I'm riding, almost screaming into the mic <laughs> with the, the GoPro. So uh, it appears that I'm not gonna have to speak that loud with um, this setup. But like I mentioned, I haven't done any adjustments so there's going to be some clipping, definitely, on uh, this video. <laughs> so please bear with me if it's if it doesn't sound just right, because I haven't, I really haven't taken the time to to master it yet. But um, overall, uh, the quality is pretty good. So um, I'm I'm not going to go quite on the interstate. I'm just I'm a little <laughs> I'm just. A little wary about everything with this magnetic strip in the helmet. I'm not so sure if that's the best idea to do this. So um, uh, I'm going to go out on the dirt and just do some some quick riding out there and see how that does. But um, I seem to have alleviated the problem. Okay, once again, we're going to take her up to 55, 60 miles an hour on the stretch here. So, you know, I'm just on a typical scenic back way, highway road. You know, speeds between 55, 65 miles per hour. I'm not going to raise my voice too much. I'm just going to keep it even instead and see if that, um, how that goes. The windshield is down on the helmet. And this is, this is kind of typical riding. Most of the riding of what I do is, is like this, between 55 and 65 miles per hour on uh, highway backways, highways or highway backways, scenic backways, things like that. To get on the dirt, um, like I said, I don't do much recording on the interstate just because of all the turbulence. Uh, I don't know if this could be viable with this setup, but uh, it may work. Okay, I'm at about, what am I saying, about 55 miles per hour, between 45 and 55 alternating on this road and um, the voice command's working just fine. I don't have a lot of wind turbulence going on, like I don't have strong winds right now. And I'm trying to keep my voice at a, at a normal tone. So we'll see how that, that plays out. I'm on the dirt now and the voice command, I have the wind shield up on my helmet, so voice commands, they're not working so hot, but uh, and hear what this sounds like while I'm on the dirt. So now we've got wind coming into the helmet. Uh, and I'm still going to just talk in my, my normal tone, not yell into the mic. <clears throat> so I've stopping here and there and just listening to the playbacks. And the audio is not great, it ain't bad either. So. I'm not looking for absolute perfection. I'm just looking for something that'll consistently work with the least amount of headache. And I think this is probably gonna be a great option. Once, once I get the mic secured better inside the helmet, this is gonna be just fine. So as to be expected, once the windshield's down on the helmet, uh, voice commands work really well um, under 50 miles per hour. 
let's just leave it at that all right we're gonna move off onto another dirt road I'm gonna take this one a little slower and I know a lot of you all like to hear the sound of the motorcycle so we'll see how the mic does picking that up uh, I still currently have the windshield down on the helmet let's go ahead and get that open up <coughs> excuse me we'll see how that changes the audio Okay, I was, uh, I've got the windshield open on the helmet, and at a slower speed, the voice command works. <clears throat> I should also point out that uh, I had lots of trouble with the GoPro wired in and voice commands when I was riding with the windshield up. So, I already know this wasn't going to be a perfect solution with this setup, especially with the wind visor up. So... It works at slower speeds um, once I get up a little faster and get some wind turbulence inside the helmet it doesn't work at all so I just thought I'd point that out how's the moto sounding like this what am I at I'm just between 20 and 30 miles per hour right now Some bumps here see how this sounds wind visor is up windshield sorry you know what I'm talking about <laughs> Mike still staying in place very nice I wanted to see how this section looks on the camera with the, the different contrasts, the dark and the light. It's beautiful out here right now. So I um, can't wait to get this loaded up and have a look. I feel that some of the, the shots might be a little underexposed. Um, I'm not sure. I know, uh, <clears throat> I think the colors are going to be a little different with the Action 4 versus the, the GoPro. Alright, I'm just going to let it ride here. I've got the windshield back down on the helmet. Nice casual ride here. See how that sounds. So the good news is, uh, if you're impressed by what you're seeing and hearing at this point, which I, I keep stopping and having a look at the playback, and I'm I'm really I'm I'm satisfied. Let's just put it that way. Uh, at this point, it's only going to get better from here because uh, the next camera or the microphone is going to be that much better than what I'm using now. So. This whole wireless uh, setup is going to be the future <clears throat> for moto vlogging. I would presume, anyway, because of its its uh, ease of use, and uh, I'm I'm very happy with what I'm what I have right here, and I think this is going to just just be fantastic. All right, back on the asphalt, and we'll do one more test here. Maybe between uh, 50, 55 miles an hour. I got some some slight wind gusting, some wind at the helmet. So see how that sounds. Uh, the windshield is down on my helmet. Let 
this ride for a second, see how that sounds with the audio. All right, well, what do you guys think? So uh, that was, I didn't get on the interstate, but I will soon enough. Um, for me, right off the bat, I can just say neck fatigue is far less than with the whole GoPro. So this is, that's a big plus. Lack of any type of wiring, a huge, huge plus. Um, like I mentioned multiple times throughout the video, I, I haven't done anything with the settings for the camera and for the mic. So um, just out the box and what I've listened to and seen on the playback on the camera, uh, it sounds pretty good. <clears throat> so I did a lot, of course, you know, with the visor up, with the visor down, the helmet, with the wind coming in. And uh, I'm, I'm, I think I'm going to be extremely impressed with this whole setup. This is going to work fantastic. I have to spend a little extra money. Like I said, I got a separate, another microphone coming. And you want to keep up on the battery life and everything. But this is all pales in comparison to the headache the GoPro has given me. Headaches, I should say with uh, just the whole contraption setup, the wires and everything. This is so much easier to deal with. And uh, my only big negative, of course, is uh, the mic magnetic inside the camera, uh, inside the, the helmet. Uh, I think uh, I didn't have any problems with the, the mic slipping while I was on the dirt. I wasn't really in anything bumpy. And uh, ever since I super glued the magnetic strip in the helmet, no problems with the mic sliding out. So. You know, I switch it out and get a stronger magnet. No problems, man. And there's other ways to go about this also. So overall, highly satisfied. This is the future <laughs> for moto vlogging. No more wires, no more headaches. I can't, I'm just absolutely stoked at this whole setup. It's worth the money. So uh, let me know what you think in the comments. I'm gonna tweak all this, of course, as I continue on with this. And I'm not done with GoPro by any means, but uh, for what I do and what I'm riding with the motorcycles. This is, this is absolutely fantastic. Folks, as always, thank you very much for watching. Lots more content on the way. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. We wanna grow and that helps us out tremendously. It's free. Stay safe out there, folks. We'll see you next time. D-Rock out, adios.